my talk in, in two. The first 40 minutes, I'm going to talk about my ranch, about how I did rege regeneration from less than 5% perennial grasses in my ranch. And the second part, you cannot miss it, is regenerating from zero in a mining soils. So on the rocks, not topsoil, nothing. But, you know, I have to talk fast, so I'm going to use a translator because in an hour, it's going to be impossible to, to tell you about everything. I see a lot of young people here, maybe successors, pay attention because on my talk about my ranch, how I, I build a company, you know, we need to think about entrepreneurs, we need really work on the business instead of working hard, you know, we need, we need to see the ranch as a business, as a company, you know. And regeneration means grass. So grass means meat. So we really need to go to the soil first, and then the soil is going to give us meat, grass, and everything. Okay. 60% of the ranches here in the United States are not profitable and sustainable. 50% de esos ranchos no son rentables y sustentables, además de que no tienen sucesores. Las nuevas generaciones no quieren tomar la sucesión y 65% de los ranchos están subsidiados por otras empresas. 65% of cattle ranches in the United States are not profitable or sustainable. Aside from that, many are subsidized by other companies. More than 50% of those do not have successors. That means that, that's to say, new generations, new generations do not want to take challenge, the challenge of successor and continuing with family ranch plan. Soy Enrique Guerrero. Voy a dividir mi plática en dos. La primera va a ser el manejo regenerativo en mi rancho. Cómo crea una empresa rentable, sustentable, socialmente ambiental y la segunda parte va a ser de la regeneración de suelos mineros regenerando desde cero. My name is Enrique Guerrero and I will divide my talk today into two topics. The first one is regenerative management at my ranch where I created a profitable, sustainable and socially and uh, environmentally responsible company. The second topic will be the re regeneration on a mine starting from ground zero. Ok, en 2014, hace casi 10 años, mi familia y yo heredamos un rancho familiar, somos la tercera generación, el rancho se encontraba en estas condiciones, eh, un rancho ubicado en una zona privilegiada de Chihuahua, en las montañas, 26 pulgadas de lluvia anual, suelos muy fértiles, donde tenemos pino, encino, cedro, 30 variedades de zacates perennes anuales y de invierno. Es una zona muy fértil que incluso la agricultura se practica sin irrigación. Uh, in 2014, 10 years ago, my family and I inherited a ranch. We are now the third generation. When we inherited the ranch, it was in these conditions. It was, uh, it's located in the mountains in Chihuahua in a very productive zone. We get about 26 inches of rain per, uh, per year. Um, it is very fertile. We, uh, we also get, a, we are able to have agriculture without any irrigation. We have pine, oak, cedar, and around 30 perennial, annual, and winter grass varieties. Yo pensé que estaba recibiendo un rancho rentable, sustentable, y al hacer un inventario de pastos, de checar cuánta cobertura de zacates perennes tenía, me di cuenta que estaba recibiendo un rancho que no era rentable, que había un proceso avanzado de desertificación debido al pastoreo tradicional continuo selectivo. I thought that I was getting a ranch that was profitable and, profitable and sustainable. However, when I went in to do the inventory of grasses, I found out that, um, that perennial grasses were, uh, were non-existent. 
It was uh, making the ranch not profitable. It was in an advanced state of desertification due to many years of traditional selective grazing. El rancho antes de recibirlo tenía 140 vacas. Esas vacas tenían que ser alimentadas comprando alimento por seis meses. De enero a junio era necesario alimentarlas. Así es que me di cuenta que estaba enfrentando un problema, el cual decidí tomar el reto. Tenía dos compañías, una de transporte de ganado, una pequeña engorda de ganado. Decidí venderlas y enfrentar el reto de regenerarlo y de crear una empresa. Así como en esta foto, así eran las condiciones en que se encontraba el rancho, en un avanzado proceso de desertificación. Uh, there were, previously there had been 140 cows that had to be fed six months of the year from January uh, through June. Um, so I was, I was facing a problem. I chose to face the challenge. I, I had to sell my two companies. I had a company of cattle transport and a feedlot, so I sold both to, uh, to address and work on this ranch and create the business. This photo shows the conditions in which we found the ranch. Ok, antes de empezar a manejar el rancho me di cuenta que dos grandes regeneradores con mucha experiencia venían a Chihuahua, Jim Elizondo y Johan Sisman. Venían a dar un curso de pastoreo de ultra alta densidad y de genética, cómo crear genética con la naturaleza. A Jim Elizondo sí lo conocía, es un mexicano, pero a Johan Sisman no, investigué sobre de él y era una persona de Zimbabue, Sudáfrica, con mucha experiencia en el pastoreo de ultra alta densidad y mucha experiencia para ayudarte a hacer genética de bajo mantenimiento. Before starting, I found out that two experts in regenerative grazing were coming to Mexico, Jim Elizondo uh, and Johan Sitzman. Uh, they were co going, coming to talk about ultra-high density grazing for soil generation, uh, regeneration, and genetics and, uh, in natural environments. I had already met Jim Elizondo, but I had to investigate more, more about Johan Sietzman, who came from Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe and who's an expert in ultra-high density grazing and genetics. Okay, in investigando sobre el pastor ultra-alta densidad, todo empezó en África. Había grandes manadas de animales salvajes y empezaron a disminuir la cantidad, lo que provocó un pastoreo selectivo y una acelerada desertificación. Allá en África es donde empezó la desertificación y es lo mismo que está pasando aquí en Estados Unidos y México. I found out, when I did more research, I found out that uh, this had all started in Africa, where large herds of wild animals were decreasing due to uh, uh, decreasing grasses and increase in desertification. This is where everything started. Um, desertification started in Africa, and we are now experiencing it here in the United States and Mexico. Okay, ¿qué aprendí en este curso que asistí de dos días en la ciudad de Chihuahua? Bueno, pues. Es muy sencillo, crear un impacto animal, un mayor número de animales en un espacio pequeño por un tiempo corto. Eso va a romper la capa de la superficie de la tierra, va a permitir la infiltración del agua, vamos a depositar grandes cantidades de manur, orina y saliva y eso va a dar una fertilidad al suelo y el banco de semillas que tenemos abajo del suelo va a germinar creando un suelo con variedades de pastos perennes que tal vez especies que nunca habíamos visto. So, what did I learn in this two-day course? It's very simple. It's about animal impact. It is about having an uh, increase of large animals in a small space in a small amount of time. Uh, this, uh, with, with the hoops, they are able to open up the soil and increase the infiltration of manure, urine, and semen, therefore increasing the fertility of the soil, allowing the germination of seeds and uh, eventually seeing the germination of perennial grasses, even varieties, varieties that we had not seen here before. Okay. ¿En qué se enfoca la máxima rentabilidad sustentable por hectárea o por acre? Bueno, pues el impacto animal que crea la ultra alta densidad hace una eficiente fertilidad del suelo, convirtiendo 
el, el, los pastos en más nutritivos. Esos pastos más nutritivos y variados nos van a dar una óptima calidad de leche y vamos a producir más carne también de mejor calidad y este sistema de pastoreo nos ayuda a un fácil cuidado y bienestar de, del animal. And so what is the maximum profitability per hectare uh, in ultra high density, uh, the ultra high density grazing increases the efficiency in fertility in the, in the, new, uh, in the ground, increasing in nutritious uh, grasses, increasing the variety of grasses, therefore increasing milk production and increasing the quality of beef. This is a, a system that makes it easy to manage cattle and increase the well-being of the animals. Mucha gente estábamos enfocados en la máxima rentabilidad por vaca, pensando que una vaca grande de, de 1.400 libras nos iba a dar un becerro grande, pesado, y ese iba a ser el negocio y jamás sucedió. Ese nos llevó a la quiebra. Uh, a lot of people thought that uh, we're guided by profit per cow, thinking that a 1,400 pound cow would give us a large calf. Uh, in increasing profitability. This didn't happen and it ran us to the ground. Okay. Después de este curso, formamos una asociación Manejo Regenerativo de Ranchos. Básicamente es como HMI. Buscamos promover el pastoreo intensivo no selectivo, capacitar a ganaderos a consultores que promuevan este manejo, así como buscamos en nuestras reuniones anuales, en nuestra convención, que esos ganaderos den su testimonio de sus logros, de que ya son rentables, además de traer expositores de talla mundial para que nos platiquen de sus experiencias. So after the courses, we decided to gather together and create an association called the Regenerative Ranch Management, uh, similar to HMI. And our focus is to promote ultra-high density grazing uh, and non-selective non grazing. We train the ranchers, we, have, we hold annual meetings and conventions where uh, ranchers will share their testimonies of their increased profitability, and we bring together global presenters to, sh to share their experiences. Christine Martin promised to go to the next conference. Okay, it's a promise here in, in the convention. Okay, what I, the best for me was, I invite Johan Sisman and Jim Elizondo to the ranch after the, the, the workshop, after the course, and they say yes. I just invite them thinking that they, they will say no, and they say yes. So that was the, my best start, bringing these two people to my ranch. Okay. ¿Qué vieron en el rancho? En, un, en cada potrero tenía seis potreros y ellos vieron la, las tres situaciones en el mismo potrero. Ellos vieron overgrazing, the certification, and a lot of bunch grasses. The, the, the same situation in the same pasture. So what did they see at the ranch? Uh, in each of the six pastures that I had, they saw overgrazing, the desertification processes, and uh, lack of vegetation. Okay, la buena noticia, que ellos vieron un suelo muy fértil que estaba simplemente mal manejado. Era el pastoreo selectivo el que estaba haciendo esa certificación. Así es que la buena noticia es que fue que podía regenerar esos suelos en un tiempo corto, utilizando los bunch grasses para pastorear el ganado y después llevarlo a pasar la noche a áreas donde había la desertificación a una densidad de mil vacas por hectárea. The good news was that this was fertile soil. Uh, it had only been desertified because of the selective grazing. Uh, however, it was, I was going to be able to regenerate it in a short amount of time using uh, grazing on the, bunch, or on the bunch grasses. And during the night, to take the cows over to the areas that had been desertified. I was using a density of 1,000 cows per hectare. 
Muy bien, pues después de esta noticia, ellos me dijeron que al regenerar el rancho iba a obtener una capacidad de carga, iba a poder sostener mil vacas al hacer la regeneración en un corto tiempo. They said that with regeneration, I was going to have uh, the capacity to have 1,000 cows in 8,000 acres in a short amount of time. Eso significaba que mi negocio iba a crecer un 300%. Yo tenía 300 vacas y iba al final de la regeneración a tener mil. Era demasiado crecimiento para mí. Uh, this, was, this meant a growth in my business of 300%. I was going to start with 300 cows and end up with 1,000 cows. That was a lot of growth for me. Okay. Necesitaba pensar como empresario, porque el negocio iba a crecer mucho y tenía que pensar diferente. Nosotros los rancheros siempre estamos pensando en hacer un trabajo duro y difícil de, de incluso 12 horas, ¿sí? pero eso no necesariamente nos hace rentables en el rancho. Therefore, I had to think like a businessman, I had to think differently. Uh, ranchers often think that we need to ha do hard, difficult labor, uh, labor uh, up to 12 hours per day, but that is not necessar necessarily profitable. Invité a Dave Pratt, otra buena noticia, que aceptó venir a Chihuahua a darnos un curso a la asociación, pero antes aceptó ir a mi rancho, entonces tenía Uh, Dave Pratt de Ranching for Profit visitando también mi rancho, otro éxito para mi comienzo. Therefore, I invited Dave Pratt to come and give a uh, class or a course to our association. However, first I invited him to the ranch, and that was another success to, ha to have him come and visit my ranch. Bueno, pues ahí aprendí que debemos de trabajar en el negocio, que debemos quitarnos las botas, el sombrero, las espuelas, Comprarnos un saco, una corbata y pensar como empresarios. Empezar a cuidar las finanzas, el flujo de efectivo y hacer más carne con menos gastos. Uh, so therefore, I needed to, um, I, I needed to take off the, my, my hat, boots and spurs and buy a suit and tie to, be, to think like a businessman. I needed to take care of my cash flow and... Uh, consider the finances. I needed to increase the amount of meat production with a decrease of costs. Okay. Por último, después de aprender todos los principios de cómo manejar un, una empresa, quise formar una empresa socialmente responsable. En Chihuahua tenemos esa certificación, empresa socialmente responsable, y hay otra que se llama a great place to work. Es un diplomado que nos ayuda a ser mejores patrones. Lastly, after learning the principles of business, I wanted to get to have a business that was socially responsible. In Chihuahua, in Chihuahua, we have two certifications. One is the socially responsible business certification, and the second one is the great place to work certification. Going through those allows us to learn how to be a good boss. Que ser un, que ser un buen patrón es trabajar a tus empleados con respeto, dignidad, a todos por igual, no importa la religión, el sexo, las inclinaciones, si son de otro color, de otra nacionalidad o con capacidades diferentes. A todos hay que tratarlos por igual y eso aprendí en el diplomado. Uh, through this certification course, I learned, I learned to treat the workers with respect, dignity, and equality, regardless of religion, sex, gender, color, nationality, abilities. Everyone has to be treated equally. Bueno, pues ya no son trabajadores. Aquí aprendí que debemos llamarlos colaboradores, porque colaboran en el bienestar y en hacer riqueza de la empresa. Muy importante, no los vuelvan a llamar trabajadores, son colaboradores. Here I learned about the word collaborators, not, they are not workers. They are collaborators who work towards the business well-being and, crea and the creation of richness. So it is important that they be called collaborators, not workers. Muy bien, pues establecimos un bien común, es decir, el trabajador recibe un sueldo, sueldo justo, un trato digno y ellos en cambio tienen que generar riqueza para la empresa, bien común. Uh, so we met upon a common interest. They, were, they would get paid fair wages and be treated with dignity, and they would work for the well-being of the company. Solidaridad. Aprendí que debo 
ser solidario con ellos. Cuando tienen un problema en casa, hay que acompañarlos. And I learned about solidarity. We need to help them out when they have a problem at home. We need to be show solidarity. Justicia, tratarlos con justicia. ¿Qué es la justicia? Darle cada quien lo que le corresponde. And justice, treat them with justice. Give everyone what, uh, what, belong, what they deserve. Subsidiariedad, aquí una palabra clave para la producción. Esa palabra no la conocía es entrenarlos, capacitarlos, darles las herramientas necesarias para que triunfen en su área de trabajo y se puedan desarrollar como personas. And uh, subsidiary, which is key in production, it is to give training and the tools of, to the collaborators so that they can be successful in their work and to develop themselves in their own personal lives. Okay. Después de este curso, creé un master plan dividido en cinco etapas. Voy a hablar rápido de ellas. Las cinco etapas se iban a desarrollar en un lapso de seis años. Uh, so, after the course, I created a master plan in five stages that, was, uh, that would be implemented throughout six years. Ok. Stage one, training, structure, Bain Entrepreneur and Visit Ranch is very important. We we will have to do something different, so we need to see from other ranches what are they doing. Stage two. The stage two, all the pictures are from September the 23rd when we did the grasses inventory this year with, with six inches of rain. So this is regeneration. <laughs> okay, stage two. Start with what you have. Don't do any plans. Uh, start with what you have in your best paddock. Try to, to put on the water, on the ponds, on the water troughs, electric fences to teach the cows for, for the, we call it cow school. And then cows school, yeah. And very important, think on the water in infrastructure. Okay, this is our master plan on the water, the, the water lines, two inches, will cross in the middle of the ranch, and we will build these stripes 2,000 feet wide, and then we divide those stripes in four, from 2,000 to 500. So, uh, also we build a master tank in a high mountain to use gravity. Remember, we are solar business, we don't use fuel, <clears throat> fossil fuels, so we need to pump with the solar pumps and use gravity. Here is the school on the ponds. John, John Carroll, we use several strands, electric fences. Okay, density, this is the density, 1,000 cows on the bunch grasses with one single wire. Stage Stage three, I'm gonna talk about genetics, about rumen supplementation. Remember, nobody wants to, to supplement the cattle, but you have to feed the rumen bacteria, the microorganisms on the rumen to do a good job on bunch grasses. You won't use any supplement later on the future when you produce good perennial grasses. Okay, stage three, genetics. We continue with electric fences, with the cow school, it was hard to teach them, and then the rumen supplementation. This picture is from 50 years ago on, on my grandpa's ranch. They have an amazing hair fur, and they sold it because the buyers say that they, the hair fur was bad, bad breed. So they sold the generics, they bought charolized cattle, big cows like elephants, can you, can you imagine trying to climb the, the mountains? They went bankruptcy. So pay attention on genetics, what your ecosystem tell you. You don't choose the genetics, you don't choose the breed. The ranch tell you what, what is your breed. Okay, on the rim of supplementation, we use urea. Here's, we throw the, the urea in a lake with, mixed with something else starting with 30 grams per day, and then 40, 50, until we, we get 80 grams per day on the cows. 
If you don't use urea, you won't do this. The bunch grasses are hard to eat it total. You have to eat it total. Attack grass or overgrazing or whatever you want to call it. You have to lead the ground like that, okay? Because you're gonna see the result later. Okay, what we did on, on the pastures? We have bunch grasses over here. So we, we did a density of 1,000 and during the night, they passed the night over there doing an animal impact during the day and during the night. So we, we, we had a certification there and we did an amazing job. Stage four, increasing our stocking rate we, we had 30 months, a lot of grass, so we have two herds and <clears throat> four cowboys. And we start, I'm gonna talk, pay attention on how to produce your own bulls. Johan Sisman tell us that we need to produce our own bulls because, well, it, that, this is a video, but I, I don't know what happened. We need to create our own bulls. Doesn't matter if the bull is white and black or yellow, face, nature, selected by nature. We use a, a Cattle Max program. That program tells us which cows were our best cows. So we select our cows that come at <coughs> two years and three years again. So the program gave us 100 cows, we put a, a brand, an S, select, we put a hot brand, and in, we, we did AI on, on the cows, and we have from 100 cows, 40 calves, 40 bull calves. Those bull calves, we took them to the, a mountain, a rocky mountain with bunch grasses, and they have to go to the top to eat and go to the <clears throat> to the, you know, the river to drink water for six months. No minerals, no supplement, nothing. Six months, after six months, in June, we, <clears throat> we pick from 40 bulls, we choose 10. From those 10, we finally get the best two from the 10, so 5% from the total 40, and we take them to process the semen. So the two bulls, we, we process the semen and what we did, AI the sisters. All the sisters were AI with the same principles, paying attention in inherent body condition, hormonal balance, high relative in, intake, early maturing, a beautiful haircut, cold resistant, good odor and milk quality. Okay, stage five, we finish everything and we, we start doing direct marketing. Stage five was six years. And then we, we were certificated by organic grass fed and regenerative. Pay attention, this is the first for, photo that I show you. This is the results. Yeah. If you have a cell phone, take a picture because you need to remember those words that some people is going to tell you. We have always done it that way. This is not for me, okay? Well, this is September 23, my, my inventory on the ranch. With 150 millimeters of rain, we have these results. We have enough grass to go to the next season of rain and another year if we don't have rain. So one year and eight months, we have reserves, so we don't have to sell cows. This is my favorite place in the ranch. Look my neighbor, September 23, and the, and the rain will be in June next year. So he sold 75% of his cattle. Okay, I'm gonna talk fast about the mine because I don't have time, okay? Oh, great. 30 minutes. Well, after this work, people start asking me to be a consultant. I like because I, finally I get out from the ranch. So I start visiting ranches and doing this, you know. 
a lot of ranchers right now, they make money, you know. It's hard to believe that we work hard, we pray hard, and we don't make money, you know. I don't want the money to, to buy beer. I don't want the money even to go to vacations. I need the money to take my children to the university. That's, that's what I need the money. But believe me, it was hard for me to pay the university of two boys. And now I, I feel very good. I'm gonna learn to play golf, <laughs> you know? I can play golf now. Okay, this is another talk that you're gonna love it. Agni Coigo, Mexico, a mining, a Canadian mining company, invite me to do a project, a uh, regeneration in a mine. I say no, impossible. In that, no, no way, no way. So I called my mentor, Johan Sidman, and he told me, hey, check if you have if you see one weed, one weed, one four, do it. The miners say, we have all the money, let's do it. And I say, no. Well, they, they wrote up a, a, a small piece of paper with a, with a number. <laughs> and I say, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a fan, I really have a fan. They have a, like, I, feel I went to Oklahoma to study. I, I, they have like, like the campus that I live in Oklahoma. The miners have a, an incredible life after work. <laughs> okay, this is the, the mountain that we did regeneration. They say, we won't use topsoil. We don't have topsoil over there. Seems like there is topsoil, but no. Okay, what we did, we put an uh, electric fence around, around the, the mountain and do some job on, on the slopes with a bulldozer so they, the cattle can walk. And <clears throat> we brought an amazing cattle, cattle that didn't lose a minute to start doing regeneration from the same ecosystem with experience on the electric fences and experience in ultra high density grazing. The, the density was 2,500 cows per hectare. So they were like this. Okay, we put uh, <clears throat> corrals, pens, you know, to receive the cattle. And then this is the soil, the, not topsoil. They say, I'm sorry, but we won't put you topsoil, so I, I choose corn stalk, three inches, we cover their soil with three inches. We start, we, we inoculate the seeds, four perennial grasses, we inoculate the seeds with microorganisms and mycorrhizas, and throw the seeds in a bedroom, we call it bedroom, a space 100 feet by, by, by 100. That's called a bedroom, you're gonna see the bedrooms for one, day, 24 hours. Right there, the, the miners are applying the cornstalk after they put the seed, and we have the, a laboratory. They, if I ask anything, they, they bring me. Even a girlfriend, but I'm married. <laughs> so we, I asked for a laboratory, and they put a laboratory to, to do a mycorrhizas. So after we work on, on the bedrooms, we, we, put, we apply the, the microorganisms in, in the area that we can use the machinery, you know, some areas was impossible. This picture <clears throat> is amazing. We put also seeds on, on the supplement and a cow that she didn't want to, you know, do a cow pie. Cows, she went outside and do this, and we have the perennial grasses, you can see the soil. Okay, genetics, again, genetics, the cattle have several snowfalls, uh, windy days, and they never get sick. So I'm gonna talk about humidity. Right here, 
can you see the regrowth? The, with 2,500 cows, they create a lot of humidity. We, we have grasses without rain. So that's why it's so important high densities. Look over there. And these are our bedrooms. Here's the cattle working and, and the bedrooms. Right there, the, the pens. All right. The cows have to, to do that, to, to go to drink water on the, at noon. You know, that kind of terrain was, the, the, was very difficult for the cows. Can you imagine to stay like here, like this, for 24 hours? An amazing job. Okay, the first results here, no corn stalk, just the animal impact, the density. Three inches of corn stalk, the first results. After, when, we, when the rain starts, you can see, right here is the cattle, you, you can see after two weeks, that picture. Two weeks of, of the raining, when the rain starts. Okay. March, the same place, September. Well, when, when that... <laughs> this is the reason that I want to learn to play golf. <laughs> okay? All right, Agnico Eagle won an, an award as a, the best environment you know, project in the whole world in 2020. You know, the miners teach us something very, very, and I'm gonna say it in Spanish because I really want to do it. Say, Los mineros nos enseñaron a devolverle el suelo después de sacarle mucha riqueza, le devolvemos su fertilidad agradecidos con el suelo. The miners taught us to return the soil after taking out all of its richness, to return the soil back to its place uh, with, uh, um, with added, um, I'm sorry, to, uh, it, while being th to return it to its place while being thankful with the, so uh, with the soil. Okay, Aquí, here is my information. If, if you want to talk about your project, I can help you, call me, email me. Uh, I really want you to help me. And I'm gonna say a reflection with you, you know, we have our association convention in September, and a, a rancher came came to me and said, hey, Enrique, thank you. Why? I listened to your podcast on working cows with clay. I was going to sell my ranch. I was very disappointed. I don't make money, don't make grass, nothing. I was going to sell it. I am the fourth generation. And I listened to your podcast, and I listened it again and again. After maybe five times, I decided not to sell the ranch and do the same that you did in the mine. Now my ranch is profitable, sustainable. I make money, and it's, it's my family reunion, you know? So I can imagine if I, if I sold it, you know? I can imagine. So he said thanks. And my reflection is this, we are doing this convention for you to take home our experience to do a profitable business. You know, all this effort from all the people is for you. Take it home, you know, take it home because the ranches are incredible. I enjoy the tears from this lady because ranchers are a family reunion. They, the ranches have a lot of work, you know. In my ranch world, 100,000, I, and they give me 500,000, I won't sell it. It's a lot of work, you know, for us. So take this home, take this home, and 
do consulting, become an entrepreneur, we need to think out, outside of the box. You know, we need to work on the business. I am not saying you that don't ride the horses and check during the afternoon what the collaborators are doing. Do it, of course you have to do it. But we need to invest time becoming entrepreneurs and take care of, of the business, you know, uh, do a research of new things and we need to be profitable. It's, it's not fair, you know, a lot of work, a lot of, you should see my hands, how I had my, my hands terrible and my, and my pillow. I never, <laughs> I, I can sleep, you know, my pillow was terrible too. So now I have a good sleep and the family is happy, but you know, we have hard times, but it's possible, it's possible. And, and the, the miners, the, the miners teach us that it's possible because on the ranches is easy, but this, from this to this, you, if somebody says it's not for me, not my ranch, any kind of soil, after this, it's possible, you know, it's possible. So uh, another, I, I read another beautiful thing that says, God forgive us, people forgive us, but Mother Nature, Mother Nature, don't forgive us. So take this home, remember everything is borrowed, it's not your ranch. Is next regeneration, next generation ranch, and you have to give the rest for them better than how you receive it, you know. So let's work together. We are a big family. We we have passion, and we can help each other. I'm here to help you. Believe me. Call me anytime, and I will help you because I don't want you to say. I'm sorry I sold my ranch. I want you to say thanks. I did it. I did it. I did what you did in the mine or what you did in your ranch. And I'm very happy, you know. We need to produce meat with grass, you know. For 50 years, we do always genetics for the feedlots. We prepare our steers to become uh, a pigs for the for the field lots. We never make money, but we always made, made genetics for the field lots. Let's make genetics for grass fed operation. People are asking for better meat, you know, uh, <clears throat> meat without nothing, you know. We, we need to eat wealthy, you know. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I, I think we have time for, for questions, right? We do. I, I saw you very interested. Thank you. Um, when, when I study, you know, to, to be a good speaker, there's somebody teach me how to speak, and he said, find the three Fs, a friendly face, find a friendly face, and it's him. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. So we're going to take two questions, I think. Um, let's see some hands. I see one here in the front, so I'll take this one, and then... I wanted to ask on the mine restoration, uh, one piece that either I, I didn't catch or you didn't mention, when you had the cattle in those smaller areas initially when there was no grass and there was no topsoil, were you feeding them hay in there to keep them? Uh, that's what they were eating, but you were using the benefits of the byproduct of them eating the hay. Is that how you use them as a soil builder? Yeah, you're right. I, I, I didn't mention. We cover the soil with seeds for perennial grasses and then cornstalk three inches. And then we feed them, we put cornstalk and, and oats hay. And then 
At noon, we feed them with, with supplement. We start with five, 500 kilograms, but believe me, when they were in the steep terrain, we have to give them 1,000 grams per, per head because they were losing body condition. But yes, we feed them oats, hay, corn stalks, and, and a supplement, one, one kilo, 1,000 kilograms for per day, and they never, they never lose condition, and we, we took 99 cows, I, I didn't mention that, and one bull, one bull with the purpose, you know, torn, so it was no good for, <coughs> for the breeding, and we have 65 cows bred for that bull, <laughs> so. Another thing to learn, sometimes the bulls can work in, with that condition of the purpose. Um, buenos dias, Enrique. Gracias por estar con nosotros. Thank you for being with us. Um, tenía una pregunta sobre um, cómo el primer paso de regeneración es cambio de mente. Um, hablaste un poquito sobre eso con la frase de... Um, the most expensive uh, phrase is we've always done it that way. Y quería saber más sobre la empieza para usted, sobre cambiando mente con sus trabajadores y personas, um, our colaboradores. Very uh, quick question. The, can, can the can question in English is a question, the first thing when working on regeneration is changing the mindset. Uh, and mentioning the, the most expensive thing is uh, saying, the most expensive words is saying, I've never, uh, I've always done it this way. Well, I would like to know more about how you change the mindset of the collaborators. Fue muy difícil cambiarle la mente, pero cuando visit, por eso en la etapa uno visitamos ranchos, para ver los ranchos que iban más avanzados que nosotros y vieran los resultados. Y ellos se dieron cuenta que todo era muy fácil después de construir cercos, agua y producir mucho pasto. Ellos ah, <coughs> tenían seis trabajadores y empezaron a hablarse entre ellos, a decir, ya no hay trabajo aquí, nos van a correr algunos de nosotros. It was very difficult to change their mindsets, but that's why in stage one it is so important to visit other ranches that are, are um, in, uh, further along than we are, because they are able to see the result by themselves. They are able to see that it is uh, easier to do the work once you have the fencing, the water, and a lot of grasses. I started out with six workers, and they started talking amongst themselves, saying that there was no, uh, not much work left to be done, so some of them were, were going to lose their jobs. It's hard, but my neighbor, how, how do you think that he, he, <laughs> he's thinking right now? He wants to do it, you know, because he, he had to sell the cows. So sometimes we need to, to show the people the results. Of course, you, if you have 40 years doing the same, and it's hard to, ch to change your mind, but when you do the same, you go to the same place also. So, you know, when I, when I ask friends, hey, let's go to vacation, let's do this. No, I can't. I have to do this and on the ranch, and I have to feed the cattle, and I don't have money, I have to pay the feed bills. So, remember, regeneration means grass. And the results, maybe you, you lose the body condition on all your cows if you don't do it right. But the results on the soils are after rain. That, that is for sure. Results on the soil are <clears throat> after the rain, but cows are first, you know. So I suggest you to work on the people, treat the people right, the cattle genetics, you know, the, the, the genetics, and the cattle is first, and, and then soil, you know, and then soil. Uh, also, if, if we have a, a, a little minutes, 
I want to talk about some things that we have to do, like we, we, we did a, a lot of <clears throat> high density in February. In August, we, on that place, we have a lot of grass, new grasses, of course. If you go to those grasses, when they are growing, that means, you know, <clears throat> overgrazing because they are not mature. But cows are first. If, if it's August and that pasture is very good, you need to take your cows to that pasture. I don't care if, if it's overgrazing because body condition is first. You need to get those cows breed. So sometimes you have to make some change, but you know, any, any, that's the reason that you, you need to build fences uh, forever because you, you can do those, those moments. Sometimes we, you have a lot of rain in, in the pasture that is growing. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's like the picture on the mind. And you have to sacrifice because the cows are first. So you, you move the cattle and eat those grasses that are growing. Believe me, the cows in two weeks will be fat again. And I'm sorry, but cows are first. So we have different issues depending on the pasture. Sometimes you do a thousand cows density, 500, 200, depends. So we need to learn. Johan Simon says you need 10,000 hours of watching to learn about everything. When you complete 10,000 of watching, you're gonna be a consultant, you're gonna have a, an amazing business, and nobody's gonna tell you what to do. 10,000 hours of watching, so pay attention. Nature tells you what the nature needs, you know? And very important on, on the bulls, very important to produce your own bulls. When you produce your own bulls from your best cows, those bulls are the best bulls, not in the world, on the universe, you know? <laughs> Believe me. Believe me. We always pay attention on the, on the color and no, no way. Select by nature. From your best cow, by nature. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Enrique.